I think we we really came into the season ready. We had lofty goals. Um, we had a lot of people who were very fit and had a lot of experience too. We have a big junior class, so um, you know I think we were really we were ready to compete um, at a high fitness level, and and they had worked hard, you know, in the preseason, so they they knew the game plan. The three-game losing streak was difficult. Um, those were three really good teams. So it was Mary Washington who was in the Final Four last year. Um, we outshot them and outcornered them, but lost one to zero. Um, then Drew, who was 16 and four this year, and we lost in overtime at their place. Um, that was a very even game, not our best game. And then we lost to Chris for New Newport at their place. Um, we were up 2-0, they came back, tied it, they won it in the last 67 seconds. So, you know, I, I think that was a hard stretch because um, the games were so close. I would say in the Mary Wash game and in the Christopher Newport game, we made, an, you know, errors that you can't make against teams like that. And then, um, you know, Christopher Newport is now a Final Four team, so we know that those are three really good teams. Um, and in the Drew game, I, we didn't come out strong, so we played a very lackluster first half and then tried to win it in the second half. And if it's against a good team, then sometimes that's not enough. After that losing skid to good teams, I think, you know, we beat ourselves up a little bit, but we also just looked at what what were we doing well in those games and what did we need to improve on and we watched a lot of film and um, you know went went about just learning from those experiences and I think then our goal was to to go undefeated in the rest of the um, regular season and so I you know we almost accomplished that goal did really well and um, I, I think just after the after the CNU game we knew that we were really good and a really strong program and that we, we didn't want these one goal losses that you know no one really cared that you out cornered and out shot someone it was did you win so we wanted, you know, we were going to do what it took to get the win. And um, I think the win over Ursinus after that three game skid was huge because they're a perennially strong program. They've won a bunch of national championships. They're, they're just really good. And we had lost to them by one goal at their place last year. So, um, you know, they were a tough team. They were in there in the Centennial Conference Championship game this year. And that was a, a great win for us. It was not our best game. I, I don't think we came out hard for that game. Um, I think that's still a little bit of a question mark. Um, I do think when you have a lot of ranked teams on your schedule, and um, I, I think it's easy to get pumped up for those games, and it can be mentally a little bit more difficult when they're not. But you know, we just talked about how our conference is really good. Scranton is a really good team. Um, you know, they they finished the the season regionally ranked, and um, you know that we just can't take anyone lightly. You can't just show up. So um, I, I think everybody was disappointed after that game. We also realized that we needed to come together and shake that off. And we have a saying that we flush things away and um, we we just really were we we watched film from that and I also um, got on to them some because I, I I don't think you know we didn't play to our potential and um, you know then we we came out really strong in the landmark tournament which was great I mean, we've talked about the pressure that's good pressure um, you know I, I thought it just like in the elite eight game you know we were away 
Uh, we hadn't been in that round before. We had lost to this team in the last 67 seconds. That's good pressure. We like being picked first. I mean, we want to be first, so um, no, I, I think we we thought that was a good thing. We were excited about it and we wanted to fulfill expectations. It wasn't really said to me, but there was something, uh, I guess, of a, the girls thought that we had a curse in overtime. And last year we lost two games in overtime and two games in penalty strokes. And then this year we had lost two games in overtime. So, um, you know, I, I think though there was the mentality of we're just as good as this team. They're making their 28th appearance in the NCAA, but we've played them so tight and we have a real opportunity on our home field to go to the next round. We weren't going to be satisfied, you know, losing in the first round on our home field. And um, they had just lost in overtime to William Smith and um, we talked about what William Smith had did and, and I said, you know, it's not going to be easy, but this is our plan and they executed it. So it, it was really an exciting win. I think going into overtime with DePaul, we had, um, you know, we didn't have a great first half, but we, we pretty much dominated the second half. So I, I think we felt like, you know, we could do exactly what we did against Messiah, get a corner and score on the corner, and, and that's what we did. So um, I thought, I thought the group that was out there just was really composed, really smart, um, you know, because you can get overwhelmed in that situation with the sudden death and, um, you know, it was a group that had just experienced success with it and they, they did a great job. It was awesome. We were really excited to play Newport again. We lost to them in penalty strokes last year. Um, and then, like I said, in the last 37, or sorry, 67 seconds of the game this year. So we knew we were really close, that we had a great opportunity. We had played well against Messiah and DePaul. Um, so we were just very excited. And I think we, we had a strong first half. Um, you know, it, it can be difficult to, to play that much in one week. So in one week, we won a championship, beat Messiah in overtime, beat DePaul in overtime the day before, and then you're playing less than 24 hours later. So it, it's intense, and we knew that it would be physically and mentally intense. But I, I think everybody felt like, you know, it was a, a real opportunity and that we could win. Um, you know, as, as the game went on and it was scoreless, you know, you, I think sometimes you start to tighten up a little bit and, and you're pushing so hard. We had uh, two injuries, so one of our starters, uh, Colleen Harwood, went out and had to get stitches and wasn't able to come back. And then we had um, one of our other subs that we use a lot, uh, Sophia Sansone, also had a concussion, so was out for the game. So I do think it was a, a little bit, you know, we didn't have our, our full crew. Um, which can help you when you're playing back-to-back -back games, of course. But um, everybody was really positive, and we were really pushing. We had an opportunity with 30 seconds left. Um, we were getting shots, and, and we had a, a ball that Kim Herman, she just is tireless. She is such an awesome uh, worker, and she was able to get this ball across the, the defense, and it went right across the cage, and we just missed it. Um, you know, and that that's going to happen, but we were still pushing. The whole second half, we were really, in the second half of the second half, we were up there. They scored with eight minutes left, and then we were, it was like full throttle trying to get a goal. So, you know, when the game ended, we were sad. There were, there were a lot of tears, um, and I thought that showed that people thought we could, you know, we could definitely be a Final Four team, and I think we realized how close we were. So, you know, if, if the score's four to zero, I think you kind of walk away with, you're sad, but you know you were beaten. And I think 
this was, it's just sometimes harder to take that 1-0 loss because, um, because it's, it's very close and you're very close to a goal that you had talked about, you know, since last year. So. I think we have a really strong team in general. Um, we have a lot of a lot of good players who I think could be recognized, and, and some I, I think were missed in the All Conference ballot. Um, but these three have have really been leaders on the field and and have been had really strong years. Um, Meg is the goalkeeper, and she's had you know she's our only senior and has just been really solid and. Um, you know, I think after the Christopher Newport first game was competing a little bit more and then um, I think was playing her best hockey at the end of the season and, and really just uh, owning that role. So I mean, she finished with a great career and um, you know, she, she can say that she had you know, the first three tournament appearances in, in her career and, and she played most of those minutes in goal, so that was pretty cool. Um, Kim was just the catalyst of our offense, our only person to be in double digits in points. Um, she worked so hard over the summer. She, um, she came in in unbelievable shape and never let go and just, you know, it, we hardly ever took her out. She just could, she could play any any side of the field and she just worked so hard to create things so she could create and finish things and she you know just did so much for us this year. Mora um, was our center midfielder and could play on both sides of the ball. She was uh, our trail on defensive corner so she had a big role in our team being um, well as of last week we had the number two goals against average in the nation so she was a big part of the defense but then she was our, our main striker on offensive penalty corners so she was really involved in the attack and so she's just a very well-rounded player I, I would say the quarterback of our team this year and um, she had an unbelievable season. Meg has been huge for our program. Um, we she she played in about half the games, I guess, as a freshman, and then sophomore, junior, and senior year um, was the main starter. And so she was the main person in goal when we won our first three landmark championships and went to the NCAA. So she's made a, um, went to the first round. She went to the Sweet 16 as a sophomore, and then this year helped lead us to an elite eight performance. So I don't I don't know that. There's not a whole lot more that you can ask for, and she, she just did a great job. You know, we said to the players after that game just how proud we were of them. Um, it was such a great group. It, it can, you know, the season takes its toll emotionally and physically. We had people with stitches and um, you know, we, we had one of our players go out with a, an ACL in the third game. She had worked so hard to get to where she was. Um, you know, we had one of our captains had surgery on Monday. So, I mean, people were sort of nursing themselves through the season. And I, I told them I thought it was the, they were the most mentally tough group that I had ever coached. Um, they really rode the highs and lows really well and never got, you know, over, I don't know, never, never, um, they, they took everything um, with an even keel and, and were able to perform in the next game. And they could take the criticism, they could take the compliments, and still come out strong. So it, it was just a really good group to work with. And, um, you know, I think they now know what they're capable of. Uh, with only one senior graduating, I think that they'll have lofty goals for next year. And I, I think they're reasonable.